So you got to go to the main settings menu. So you press the home button and go down to the gear on the bottom of the screen and then you'll be in the main settings menu on the television. So what do I do to this TV to set it up the way that I want it to be without it, uh, without it being a major deal? So you've taken the TV out of the box, you've done your firmware update, and you're ready to set the TV up to control it. First option that you're gonna go to is the power settings menu. Go here into the eco mode, which is the only option in that menu. And you want to make sure that all of these say off, off, and off. Power saving is really only saving you, again, from the best picture possible. It won't drive the TV to its full intensity or full brightness. Customers are paying a premium to get a good quality Sony TV set. You want it to be as bright as possible uh, so you can dial it in to be as good looking as you want it to be. So turn the power saving off. Idle TV standby is one that's really confusing for a lot of guys and I just want to clarify what it actually does. To control this TV third party, you want to make sure that idle TV standby is turned off. What does it actually do? If the TV sits in the standby or off condition for one of these pre, uh, predetermined periods of time, like an hour up to 24 hours, in this case, we'll say 24 hours, if the TV sat for that long in the standby mode, it'll go to a deep sleep. It'll shut off the ethernet port on the TV, It'll shut off all the uh, connectivity on the TV set, so the only way that you can wake it back up is with a physical button press or using the button on the remote. It will not respond to a serial command. It will not respond to an IP command. So how do you avoid that? Just make sure that idle TV standby is set to off. Uh, and then last but not least, auto shut off. Totally up to you. Again, in control world, I'm a fan of having the TV in a known state before I issue commands to it, so power on, power off, what have you. If you turn auto shut off to off, the TV will just sit there on a screensaver or a blank input or whatever you were looking at last uh, and will not turn off until you physically turn the power off on the TV set. So you've got the TV set up power wise so that you can control it. What are my other options? Another thing to look at on this TV, and this is a running change, so if you've done a firmware update or you've just gotten a D-series TV lately, uh, you just want to make sure that this is actually accurate. Go into the daydream mode and you want to make sure that it says when to sleep is never. What daydream does is we'll actually go to like a screensaver of colors or you could point it to like a computer in your house that has files on it or you can point it at a USB drive and it'll actually play a slideshow on the TV in the idle mode. Uh, but what we've kind of found is, at least the feedback I've gotten from integrators is, is sometimes it's hard to wake the TV up out of the daydream mode. So if you don't want to have to deal with that, just make sure that it says when to sleep is never. It doesn't matter what the rest of this stuff says. When to sleep, I don't want it to go to sleep. I want the TV to, to be awake for as long as I want the TV to be awake for. So power, all that stuff set to off. Daydream set to never. So now I'm going to try and control this TV. How do I control it? Whether you're controlling the TV via IP or you're controlling the TV via serial, you have to turn on the things that I'm about to show you guys here, both of them. And the first thing you want to do is go into the home network settings tab, go down here and make sure that remote start is enabled on the TV. By default that will be set to off. What does this actually do? keeps the ethernet port alive on the back of the TV set. Just like we showed you with network standby on the receiver, this is how you keep the ethernet active in the standby mode on the TV. Next step, go to the home network settings tab, click OK if you can get there, there we go, and go down here to the bottom where it says IP control, click on that option and make sure that simple IP control is turned on the TV set. Again, by default, out of the box, that will not be enabled. So you've got to go in there and make sure that simple IP control is enabled on the TV set. So you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, I'm controlling this TV via serial. What does IP control have to do with serial control? And although on paper it doesn't really seem to make much sense, but uh, from what we've been learning in the real world is because the IP strings and the serial strings are the exact same commands, they all run through the same logic circuit. So it makes sense to make sure that you've got 
IP control enabled on the TV as well as serial control, so all of that circuitry is all working and, and jiving and, and talking correctly. So you've turned on remote start, you've engaged your IP control, now you're gonna go over here and you're going to make sure that serial control or RS-232 is turned on by the TV and again, you're inputting those uh, commands via the serial port. By default, out of the box, serial control is not enabled on the TV set. So if you take it out to a job and you haven't enabled serial control on the TV set, you start issuing serial commands to the TV, nothing's gonna happen because you haven't actually engaged that mode on the TV. Why do you need to engage the TV? Again, it's a power saving feature. It takes more electricity to keep all of these things at a heightened state so that it will respond to commands, whether it's in the standby mode or in the off or in the on mode.